To really connect with other people, you need to synchronize your brain activity with theirs. But what does that really mean and how do you do it? Let's begin with a simple situation you've probably found yourself in. Your attention is fixed on your friend sitting across the table from you. The cafe you're in is filled with sounds of espresso machines and baristas calling out orders. But your brain filters out all of this. The only thing you hear is your friend's words. In this moment, the connection between the two of you almost seems to be the only thing that matters. But the problem is, conversations like this can be hard to come by especially if you're dealing with mental health challenges that make it difficult to connect with other people. And that difficulty is understandable because in reality, your brain is doing something amazing. In fact, both you and your friend's brain are doing it. It's a kind of neurological dialogue that allows you to connect on this deeper level. One half of this dialogue is the activation of brain systems that allow you to speak express feelings, and get into each other's minds. For example, the right temporal parietal junction is a brain region that helps you to form models of other people's minds, allowing you to predict what they're thinking. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. What is unique about these kinds of conversations is that they involve something called interbrain synchronization. In other words, somehow, you and your friend's brain are synchronizing their activity. It's not just that you feel connected to him, you really are connected at the level of brain activity. But how is it possible that two separate brains, which cannot see each other, are somehow matching their patterns of activity? To answer that, we need to back up a little bit. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, it might partly be because your brain and my brain are synchronized. If so, give it a like to let me know. So over the past several weeks, let's say you've been having feelings of depression, burnout, and difficulty in emotionally connecting with the people you care about. So you started going to therapy. You've been getting to know your therapist, opening up about how difficult things have been, and she's been teaching you strategies for combating unhelpful thoughts and taking positive actions to improve your mental health. Over this time, your brain has undergone a number of changes. For example, your prefrontal cortex and cognitive control networks have strengthened their connectivity with regions like the amygdala and the dorsal raphe nucleus, which are involved in anxiety and hopelessness. So now you can more easily inhibit feelings of anxiety and hopelessness. Not only that, you've also begun to experience a stronger connection with your therapist, feeling confident that she supports you and cares about your well-being. You can tell that she listens and makes an effort to really understand what you're trying to express. She sees you. Now, according to a 2022 peer-reviewed article by neuroscientists Haran Sened, Sigal Zilchimano, and Simone Shemaitsori, this feeling of connectedness with your therapist may not just be a byproduct of therapy, but it might also add to your ability to connect with your friend, say, at the coffee shop. How is that possible? During therapy, your brain is not by itself. It's being continuously influenced by another brain, your therapist. You're hearing her supportive words and seeing her facial expressions as you tell the story. She's not just acknowledging how you feel, but also trying to understand your thought processes to see why you feel that way. While doing this kind of mind reading, she's engaging her brain's theory of mind network, which includes the right temporal parietal junction I mentioned earlier, as well as brain regions involved in personal values, like the medial prefrontal cortex. That allows her to focus on what's going on inside your head, what you care about, how you think, and so on. Within her brain, she's forming a model of your mind. In other words, your therapist may, on some level, be mimicking your brain's activity inside her own brain. Neuroscientists have discovered that experienced therapists are more likely to show a high degree of interbrain synchronization with their clients compared to novice therapists, specifically in that right TPJ and the medial prefrontal cortex. So it's likely that your therapist is actively synchronizing her brain with yours even if she doesn't realize what's going on. But as we mentioned earlier, 
Lately, you've had trouble connecting with your friends and family, which is part of the reason you're going to therapy in the first place. Happily, you've started noticing that it's not only easier to talk to your therapist, but now it's also easier to connect with your friends. That's because thanks to the training ground of your therapist's office, your brain has gotten better at synchronizing with other brains. By doing so, you find that you're getting better at collaborating with coworkers and generally that you can communicate more effectively. Your relationships just seem to work better. Your brain is continually getting better at predicting and matching its activity to that of your conversation partner, especially in the theory of mind network, including that right TPJ and medial PFC. In your work as, say, a teacher, you're finding that you're better able to connect with students and that their grades are improving. You may also find that you're more persuasive because you're better at understanding and speaking to other people's deepest values and desires. In doing so, you're able to reach in and activate their brain's valuation system, including the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, which makes them more likely to say yes to your request. Now, to be clear, everything I've mentioned is a real benefit of having a greater ability to engage in interbrain synchronization. In this hypothetical case, you enhance this ability through psychotherapy. And there's good scientific evidence that this kind of change often does occur post-therapy. But are there ways to immediately enhance interbrain synchronization so that you and someone else can quickly get on the same wavelength? One way is to focus your attention not on what you might like to say next, but instead on what your conversation partner is saying and feeling. Listen deeply. Try to put yourself in their shoes. Immerse yourself in what it would feel like to be in their position. Pay attention to subtle cues like facial expressions, tones of voice, and body posture. In fact, behavioral synchrony, where you synchronize your movements with someone else, has been shown to correlate with neural synchrony. So it may help to complement this person's emotional expressions with your own expressions of understanding and compassion. Yet while mimicking other people's movements may be a potent way of inducing neural synchrony, too much mimicry will probably seem really weird and off-putting. But another tactic is to engage in collaboration, like problem solving or team building tasks. If you work with someone toward a shared goal, both of your brains are representing the same valuable outcome, that is the goal. And that may be a result of similar activity in your ventromedial prefrontal cortex and other regions involved in valuation and goal-directed behavior. Now, a third tactic is listening to music together. Neuroscientists have shown that simply listening to music or even a metronome with another person enhances interbrain synchrony across brain waves. Social psychologists have shown that when people move in rhythmic synchrony, as when a crowd dances together at a concert, they feel unified with each other. So back at the coffee shop, your friend offers to give you a ride home and you accept. During the drive, he cranks up the volume on a song you both like. And as you synchronize the bobbing of your heads to the beat and the movement of your vocal cords to the lyrics, you're also probably enhancing the synchronization between your brain and his. Now, personally, I find this aspect of brain function completely fascinating. Back in college, one of my good friends and I were in the middle of a stimulating conversation we were talking about the flow state we got from skiing and mountain biking. And we started talking about other activities like writing or drawing that gave us similar feelings of flow. At one point, he mentioned something I'll never forget. He said that stimulating conversations like the one we were having were a major source of flow for him. I totally agreed. And now looking back on it, I can't help but imagine that part of the satisfaction that comes from a great conversation is the result of interbrain synchronization, our brains flowing together. In any case, one great way to connect with other people is to just communicate with them. So let me know what you think of this video by dropping a comment below. But if you want to really get in sync with someone else's brain, you have to communicate live and in real time. For example, every month I do a live stream about some neuroscience topic only for Patreon supporters of Sense of Mind. These patrons get to comment and ask questions that I answer in real time. They also get exclusive written 
blog post versions of every new video and live stream. So I want to thank all the current patrons who make this channel possible through their monthly subscriptions. If you want to contribute to making this channel better, and if you want to be part of a growing community of brain enthusiasts, go to patreon.com slash sense of mind to become a member today. The link for that is in the description. And if you want to learn more about how to improve your brain and your life, check out this video about the neuroscience of resilience and how to harness it to be mentally tougher and more effective in life. You can also check out episode three of my podcast with my friend, the neuroscientist Taylor Guthrie, where we discuss neural synchronization and related topics. Taylor's really an expert in this area, so I definitely suggest you check out that episode if you're interested. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode of Sense of Mind. I'll catch you next time.